Hey guys, today is finally the day. We're going to be putting in the Schwenk N55 Plus Turbo on my car. Finally! Alright guys, so this clearly is not a beginner's job. This is a very involved, uh, very skilled job. And I've done it in different cars. I've never done it in this car. I would like to do it all in one day, but you know, I'm not going to rush it. This, this is not something that I want to have to do a second time because I've missed a step or something. Uh, to help myself in that, I even made myself a checklist. I uh, researched online, I checked the BMW steps, and I kind of made, made a checklist based on the mods that I have on my car right now. That's how we're looking so far. Uh, I ended up having to move some of my stuff around. As you see here, I, work my, I moved my workbench and my toolbox over to this side so I can get this car in here angled because I needed space not only in the front, but also on the passenger side to get in there. So this gives me a lot of space here. So, so far what I've done is, uh, let's see, da, da, da. I jacked up the car, removed this wheel here, obviously. Check out those calipers, huh? <laughs> and, of course, removed the big, the two big panels with the belly pan and also the one that goes down the length of the middle of the car. We're moving on to do some structural stuff. We're going to go ahead and start taking this part off. There you go, guys. So anybody that says that you have to remove all this, all this stuff individually, there you go. Show them this. <laughs> it can come off in one piece and save you a whole lot of time. Okay, so the next step now is going to be to remove the top of this Beamer House intake because I need to remove the boost pipe, which is way down here. That's it right there by my thumb. It's the output of the turbo going down to the intercooler. That's why I needed to get this stuff off because I need to access all of this. There it is. So old cone would sit up here and that's how that went that's the bimmer house intake the ftp uh, boost pipe is out and wow <laughs> it kicked my butt but it got done right wastegate reference is off the wastegate which is right there uh that's coming from over here the boost sensor i mean i'm sorry boost control solenoid let's go ahead and take off the downpipe Okay, the downpipe is out and the wrap is still looking immaculate. I've had it on for about three weeks now. Look at that, it's still gorgeous, clean. I'm so happy with that. Boost control solenoid and the heat shield. This needs to come off because you need this out of the way so you can get to the mounting nuts for the turbo itself. Okay, now in order to drain the coolant, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this pipe from the block. It holds up right there. And yeah, it's gonna rain coolant all over the place. Okay, it's finally draining. This took forever, but I'll let it drain there until it gets uh, low and then I'll go ahead and pull it off. Now guys, you know I can't put any crusty parts back in the car. Look at the back of it. Uh-uh, I'm not putting that back in the car. We're gonna go ahead and clean that up and then it'll be good to go.
Okay, here you go. This is much better. I'm, I'm okay with this. Okay, so I already lowered the sway bar. You see here, I got a little play there because I need to have some room so I can get to the mounting bolts for the water pump up there. There's two down here. There's one on the top of the water pump that I got to get to. And I'm not taking the water pump all the way out. I just need to get enough room in it uh, so I can get to the clamp for that metal pipe that we pulled off the block. Unfortunately, that clamp is pointing down and I have no way to get to it. So we're going to have to do it this way. You see the condition on this O-ring? It's pretty flattened out. It is the original. I am glad that I'm taking care of it now. I got a new O-ring here and we got new bolts for it as well. All right, so I finally got the thermostat to water pump hose out. Separated from the water pump, that was not a fun job. And uh, anyway, there's the water pump. <laughs> I basically moved it from here and rotated upwards and it's sitting right here now. I just need the water pump to be out of my way so I can get a more straight shot towards that one bolt of the motor mount bracket that I still can't get to. I can see it, but I can't get to it. I'm gonna call this bolt the SOB bolt because wow, what a nightmare it's been. But I finally was able to break it loose and notice what I'm doing there, focus. There you go. So I got me a little extension with the socket on it and a breaker bar. And I just, and obviously squishing my hand in there and I was able to clock it in a way that I finally was able to get, get it to line up with a breaker bar this way. So I had all that room to push. Of course, I had to remove my strut brace, but finally broke it loose. Okay, so, so far, Beamer House intake prototype is off. The downpipe is off. Shield is off. Obviously, the fan is off because I had to get the boost pipe out of the way. There's that. And then also, obviously, we've drained coolant. The water pump is sitting right there. <laughs> and that was all so I can get the motor, the last bolt of the motor mount out. You can hear it. That's the motor mount and the motor mount bracket. It's loose in there. I just need to lift the engine more so I can get clearance to get the motor mount out of the way. Then I can take off the turbo. So that's where we're at so far. Obviously, we did also have to remove the, the coolant pipe here. And yeah, so we're making progress. Okay, so after a few hours of fighting it, and just to give you an idea, guys, this is how much I had to lift the engine. You see, it's, and of course I had to disconnect the charge pipe over here. You see that there? I had to disconnect that because I was lifting it so much it was starting to pull on that. So there's my setup. And I did it right. Oi. Where the transmission and the and the engine meet right there. I didn't want to do it on the oil pan itself because that's too and I didn't trust it to hold the weight of the engine. Anyway, I did all that just so I can get this off. This is the passenger side motor mount and the bracket. The problem is that there's not enough space to get it out, so you either have to lift the engine or drop the subframe to replace the this thing. And I'm here trying to take off this, and it was not fun. But anyway, there you go. They're out. Okay, so now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and just completely remove the turbo oil drain line. And the remaining lines, we're just gonna go ahead and unbolt them from the engine. Keep them on the turbo, they're gonna come out with the turbo. All right, so all the lines are disconnected. You have the coolant feed line, which comes out of the metal pipe here. So if you got the metal pipe out, you already took care of this. This is a turbo oil drain line. This part attaches to the bottom of the turbo. And this one goes to the side of the block. See, it goes in at an angle. Unfortunately, this stuff is in such tight spots that I can't really show you doing it because, I mean, I can barely see it myself. <laughs> I'm gonna have to feel my way. Um, that is the oil feed line, I believe, or coolant. And then directly below it, there's a metal pipe and that is the 
uh, the other one. I don't know which is which at this point. I just know that there are lines attached to the block. So they're both been removed. Okay. The next step is to remove the support bracket for the turbo, which is, uh, let me show you. <laughs> it's this one here, this, these two here, and then this one against the turbo. Okay, so all the securing nuts are off. Right now, if you take a look, the turbo is off the car. I mean, the turbo's off the engine. I still gotta get it out of the car, but oh yeah. <laughs> so I had to push the turbo back up into place because it's getting caught on this side. It's getting caught on the old brackets for the factory catalytic, which I don't have. This bracket is catching it. This bracket is catching it. So I'm gonna go ahead and take off these uh, bell housing bolts that secure the brackets. Put the bolts back in. It fought me every step of the way it feels like, but it's finally out. So now we can actually see them side by side. Uh, obviously the runners are the same length, uh, are the same diameter because of course they go into the same head and the outside is almost identical as far as the housings go because obviously it is made to be a, a bolt-in affair. What changes though is not only the manifold design, which unlike the factory one, which is, there is an actual cast manifold in here, but it is smaller uh, diameter runners, which of course are good when you're running at stock power levels, but when you're trying to crank it up, not so much. And the other thing is the neck. Right here, you don't see it, but that one there is actually two tiny little openings, that like two half moons basically, because it's a twin scroll turbo. And the way that BMW did it was so restrictive that that's the biggest choke point in this turbo design. Now from the outside, the new one looks about the same, but that's all, it's a much bigger opening. So you have a proper manifold design, that is actually as big as can be inside there while staying within the, the factory outside diameter sizing. And of course goes into the turbo and boom. Now, here's where you see also additional improvements, not only in the manifold design, which is a big part of it, but also here on the compressor side. So you have this, uh, this here, this one is a little bigger, not that. Now the impeller wheel is not as big as in like, for example, a power uh, a PS2. That's on purpose. Um, Schwenk did a lot of R&D on this and you know, they, they're not going for, for all out power on the N55 turbo. This was supposed to be like a perfect daily driver, uh, plenty of fun, have plenty of top end, but you know, you still want it to be able to daily drive. So you have low end and top end power. And that's what have the advantage of having this properly designed manifold does that you don't have to have big wheels that take a long time to to spool up. You can have the smaller wheel because it's not needed to compensate for the fact that you have a choke point right here, which is what the competition has to deal with. This one does not have that, thankfully. So because it has a much freer flowing exhaust side, you don't have to compensate for that by having the massive wheel. So this is still going to retain a lot of the, fa the factory low end, and top end, and it's gonna gain a whole lot on the top end. So I'm very excited about this. Also, the extruder wheels are a little bigger on this one than the, than the factory one. But again, it's all the same on the, the same principle, obviously, as the impeller side. Hey guys, so I think I'm gonna end the video here. I think it was a good stopping point. You know, I wish I could have recorded more of it, but it's only me doing it. I don't have a camera person, and also. A lot of the places, a lot of the stuff that I would have wanted to show you, unfortunately, like you have to feel your way. I can't even see it myself. I have to go in there feeling around until I find it and then just knock it loose. Um, but it is what it is. I just want to give you guys a general reference on how to do it here. But at least you see them there. It's finally out. I can't wait to see what that, what that does. With that said, guys, thank you so much for sticking around. I'll have part two coming out next week. Hopefully it's going to be the installed process. Anyway, guys, thank you so much. Uh, uh, go ahead and hit the like button if you enjoyed this. Uh, if it was helpful to you, consider subscribing. And of course, we got a lot more stuff coming your way. Thank you so much.